Hello. What's up? Hello. Can you turn on your camera so I can That's actually see camera. you? Oh, sorry. I just saw you pointing <laughs> down. I, I, oh, I didn't see that last bit. Sorry. I thought I've, I've been trying. Chat. Right. I've been trying to tell him for the last two minutes since he muted me to turn on his cam, and he's oh, completely ignored me. Had, we've, we've been talking for an hour. You could have told me at any point to turn on my camera. Yeah. There we go. I, I was multitasking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you can see right, me now. now. Now I can see Lee Khan. Everyone, should we, should we, should we start again. Let's, <laughs> let's start again. Let's start again. <laughs> Yay! Hey, Welcome hey, to the Spellflog hey. Show. <laughs> and Lee Corn's off to NASA. <laughs> NASA. Yes, you are off to NASA. How is everyone doing today? Oh my God, what a crazy week it has been. It's been so quiet. There's been so much tumbleweed. It's just been insane. Welcome to the Snowflake Show, Season 3, Episode 13. I am your co-host, Regan Ali, alongside... I'm Lee Corn. He is Lee Corn, and over the next hour, guys, we're going to give you the latest news, views, and some funny and good news stuff to boot. Lee, how are you doing, my friend? It, you've been, uh, while I've been plowing away with my content, you've just been having to sit on by seeing nothing but chaos taking place over the last couple of days. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Before before we start, I'll just say, all hail the orb. <laughs> the almighty orb. Um, the almighty yeah, orb. it's been quiet, hasn't it? I mean, there's nothing much happening. Don't blast your nose like that. <laughs> oh no, it's, it, I've, I've done worse. Don't you worry. So. No, I don't want to but, know about um, that. Um, <laughs> it's no, just it's been, been at, it's been quiet, am hasn't it? Am I, I distracted you with the no, orb? Yeah, it's just been quiet. Nothing much happening, you know. Just, I mean, I, just, I, I was thinking we probably. I mean, have, I, have I a mean, show today. I mean, obviously, last week some king made some guy with a, with a crown made a speech, and then with stick, some yeah. apparently some some nasty secretary got sacked. I heard. I don't know too much about that. I don't, and then, yeah. Um, a guy with something related to pork or pigs is back in parliament or politician or something as well. Oh, right. I don't know. Some of those trotters up. So now we, you know, we have the story about the lettuce in the past, but now we have got something with porks. So, Pork scratches. Uh, yeah, so I'm not sure where, where all that's coming from, but uh, hey ho, um, who have we got in the chat today? So we got Regan Elite. He's he's always there. Can't get rid of him. Dreamy Bottle. I plead the fifth. Um, Suzanne Devitt. Uh, good evening. Like button smashed. Hope all are well tonight. Been a while since been able to join. Welcome back, Susanna. Hope you're well. Uh, thanks for the like button. We've got. Uh, how many likes have we got so far? Not many, I don't think. Uh, I can't see actually how many likes we've got. It's not. We have me. ten likes so far. Oh, nine likes, yeah, ten. Oh, right okay, now. that's not too bad for the number of people. So if you haven't, there's still a few people who haven't smashed that like button. So please smash the like button. Um, ben uh, ninety one leads there. Good evening, Regan, Jeannie, and Suzanne. I ninety one leads. Ben Shaw. Evening, everybody. Hi, Ben. Uh, Duke Sim, taking it easy today. Haven't been feeling too good to be. Oh, I hope you're feeling better later uh, today. Uh, tonight, Duke. Um, um, um and uh, Kendra's here. Hi, Kenzie. Good evening. Uh, number three's here. Hello, everyone. Hi, number three. Uh, I said 91 leads. Cathal OG's here. Evening, all. Hi, Cathal. And G Bot says David hogs the headlines. Very good. Very good. Pick mm -hmm. one. And a very important comment that Lee intentionally missed by Kendra saying that you should always listen to Regan. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> and number three went to Amsterdam for the weekend. Well done. Oh, have uh, a lo oh, hope it was nice, lovely, uh... lovely, lovely. On, on, on my bucket list, Amsterdam. All right, we've got a lot to... Uh... <coughs> right, I'm, ha I'm happy me. now because I've got 13 viewers and 13 likes, so that's a 100% like to viewer ratio, which is what I like to see. <laughs> yeah, 100% like ratio. <laughs> yeah. Um, We've got quite a lot to cover, so should we dive straight into it? Let's get into the dun 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 what? News. The news. Come on. News. News. Oh, hang on. I've got it ready. There we go. <laughs> Oh, guys, it has not been a good night for Labour, and uh, I'm sure the Daily Mail are going to have an absolutely... Oh, yeah. Don't have a time Field with the headlines all over this, guys. Wave of Labour front benches resigned to back calls for a ceasefire in Gaza. As of the time of this recording, um, we're live, unless you guys update us in the chat. I think there's been 10, uh, 10 Labour MPs who have either stepped back or stepped down from the front benches, if I'm right. Um, 
at least probably going to have a quick. I'm just having a quick, quick while, look, yeah. Yeah, while he's doing that, but I'm going to read read uh, from this guy. So <clears throat> this is the latest uh, from Sky News on this. So a wave of Labour front benches, including Jess Phillips, have resigned in order to back an SNP motion calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. Uh, Azel Khan, Yasmin Query, Paula Bar- uh, Barker and Nazim Sarg are among the nine shadow minister juniors that have defied party orders to abstain from the vote. The MP said uh, Sakir Starmer's calls for humanitarian pauses in the Israel Hamas war didn't go far enough. More resignations are expected, as Labour said. Any front benches who vote contrary to the front benches positions are considered by convention to have resigned their position. I think, sorry, just before Labour, you, my my article I think is a bit older than the one you've got, so just read through it. Just go carry on. The one I've got on I, here is slightly different. It only says eight shadow junior ministers, but go on, carry on. Okay. Um, 56 Labour MPs back the SNP at moment. Uh, Labour leader Sakir Dharma said, I regret some colleagues felt unable to support the position tonight, but I want, this is what he said, but I want to be clear about where I stood and where I stand. Leadership is about doing the right thing, and that is the least public deserves and the least that the pub, uh, that leadership demands. Mm-hmm. That was his full statement on the uh, on there. The Labour Party have been divided over his approach to the Middle East conflict with numerous MPs and some members over the shadow front bench calling for a ceasefire, something uh, Sakir Starmer does not currently support. Uh, the Labour leader has backed the UK's government position on pushing for humanitarian pauses in the fighting to allow aid to reach Palestinians trapped in the Barbara ter- territory, but stopped short of calling for a total ceasefire of hostility, saying that that would embolden Hamas. Um, the, the resignations were expected after the SNP tabled an amendment to the King's speech back in a ceasefire. Labour MPs were told to abstain on a motion with members of the French bench expected to resign or face the sack if they defied the party's orders. Um, <clears throat> I think um, this was a really this was a really killer blow to Labour because we already knew that they were kind of split. But um, some of some of the ones who are stepping back, like is is like like some of the really good ones there. Like Jess Phillips is one uh, is one of the really good ones, and obviously she's put her, her heart her heart in it and just said like I just can't do this for the for the for the for the sake of what's happening, you know. Um, and I, I I feel for these these for some of those shadow ministers because they just they they do they're voting with their conscience, and some of them are being forced to swallow their conscience. Uh, over this, over over this, and um, it, it could, it could, it, you know, this this is not going to go away. From this is not the end of it. This is not going to go away, and this could potentially um, cause could have effects when it comes to the general election. Lee, yeah, it's not good, is it? I mean, it's, I wouldn't say it's a killer blow, but it's not, it's not, um, it's not a good, it's not good. No, uh, I wouldn't go that far, but it's still, it's still a, a um, it will affect polls over time. I think. Yeah, I think. <laughs> But I mean, what's what's annoying for me is that it's, it's we just got a point where the Tories are like eating themselves from the inside, um, mm. you know, and everything is just going wrong. All the, all the headlines are negative about the Tories, and then this happens. Um, but I mean, you know, I wonder whether the, S- the SNP knew that this would happen and decide to put the put the vote in, uh, knowing mm. that this would split the party. Um, I don't know, but whatever it's, whatever the whatever the, you know, they obviously wanted to put it forward um, and. Uh, was it 50, 56, I think, voted against Labour members, voted against it, voted for the SNP. Um, 56 for... Labour MPs backed the SNP amendment. Yeah, and it's the, it's, the, it's the front line ones that cause the issue because they ha- they can't stay under collective responsibility, just like the cabinet. Uh, they can't stay in the cab- in the backbench, in the, sorry, the shadow cabinet. Excuse mm. me. If, um, if they're also. Uh, Voting against without if they vote against um the shadow cabinet, so um or to go against the shadow cabinet's uh, ruling, so um yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's always going to be a a difficult um <clears throat> a difficult thing, but uh, we really don't want to talk about his round Gaza guys. We really don't. But we're just obviously for 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 Labour. Obviously, they're just voting. Some are voting with their conscience, and some are are swallowing their pride. Shall we say? Uh, for the mm. sake of the party, um, I don't. Know, I don't think. I mean, uh, when you look at that list, I don't think. I mean, it's really. It's, it's only Jess Phillips really that's a standout on there, from what I can see. Um, Rachel Hopkins maybe, um, but none of the others I'd really recognise as from benches. I mean, some of them are junior ministers, shadow junior ministers, I should say. 
um, and and secretaries. So they're kind of like junior positions, apart from except uh, uh, Jess Phillips. So all the senior ones have have, have stuck with the party, so the party line. Um, yeah, but no, it's not good because, like you say, the right wing press all all sees on this as an opportunity to push. You know, it's the dead cat they're looking for. It's like you know something to take the take the pressure off the Tory party and Rishi Sunak and all the rest of it. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, well, they wanted a story. They're going to get one, unfortunately. But mm-hmm. it's not going to be about the the uh, judgment. It's going to be about Labour. Ex- ex- they're going to basically say Labour exploding or imploding mm-hmm. or whatever is what they're going to probably be the headlines most likely in tomorrow's papers on some of the right wing press. Um, uh, yeah, number three says Starmer's a prat. Okay, fair enough. Um, Jess for PM says number three. Um, the doing the right thing trope is too simple a statement, says Ben. Um, yeah. Yeah, party politics is crap. The system needs to change. Says number three. Uh, I, I I I don't disagree with that part. Um, I'm I'm not exactly I'm not a massive fan of Keir Starmer at the moment. I think he he like I said last week he backed himself into a corner over this. We didn't really need to. Um, Kendra says David Pal- David Cameron must be Palpatine and Senator Palpatine from uh from what just can't you can't kill him off. He just comes back, keeps coming back. I don't know. Um, yeah, we'll talk about him later. Don't you worry. Yeah, we'll talk about him later. Number three says um, definitely worth a visit. Regan flights are cheap and accommodation can be cheap too. Amsterdam. Yep, I'm. I'll, I'm sure I'll, I'll look at it at some point once. I uh, want some backing and in, in work. Uh, Duke says if all needs it all needs to change, right down to the way we vote. Yes, PR now. That's what I say. Oh, absolutely. The whole system needs reform. The whole mm-hmm. system needs reform. Duke could not agree more with you yeah. on that. Um, Sure, we move I mean, on uh, obviously, oh, this, oh, sorry, yeah, go. let's move on, guys. There'll be more, there'll be more to come from it. I'm sure uh, our fellow, some of our fellow YouTubers will cover it as well, and I'm sure I'll cover it again at some point. Okay. <clears throat> so this was a couple of hours ago, guys. So as you guys may or may not have been aware, if you are under a rock, which I know none of you guys are, are like under a rock, but there is the court ruling on the Rwanda, and it has been deemed um, unlawful. Uh, is, is is that the right word to call it? Uh, uh, the well, is is the yeah uh, the uh, yeah be under yeah I think yeah unlawful law. And, and yeah. British law. So, so yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so this was a couple of hours ago. Rishi Sunak uh, said this morning that he was going to have a statement on with, with regards to it. So Rishi Sunak is to bring in emergency law after the court Rwanda ruling. The Prime Minister says legislation will confirm Rwanda is a safe country for asylum seekers, which it is not. We're just going to point that out there. And says he's prepared to defy the ECHR if necessary, which have absolutely nothing to do with this at all, for the record. Uh, Rishi Sunak has staked his political credibility on pushing through emergency legislation to resurrect his high-profile plan to deport asylum seekers to Rwanda after the Supreme Court ruled it was unlawful. During a combative press conference on Wednesday afternoon, hastily arranged after the five judges and unanimously rejected the proposal, Rishi Sunak said legislation would end the merry-go-round of legal challenges by setting an out in law that the East African country is safe. Amid the increasing pressure from the far right of the Conservative Party to commit to withdrawing from the European Convention on Human Rights, the ECHR, which again has absolutely nothing to do with this, Sunak said he would not allow a foreign court to block these flights. Again, they have nothing to do with this, but declined to say how. I am prepared to do what is necessary to get these flights off. I will not take the easy way out, the Prime Minister said, standing at a lecture and bearing the Stop the Boat slogan. He will not stop the boats for the record. I'm just going to put that out there. A parallel plan for a new international treaty with Rwanda would provide guarantees and laws that people deported from the UK would not be returning to their home countries, he added. While a treaty would formalise the previous uh, memorandum of understanding with Rwanda, Whitehall sources said they could this could take more than a year and then be challenged in the courts. The Supreme Court judgment read out by Lord Rees, its president, said all five judges agreed with the Court of Appeal that there is a real risk of asylum claims being wrongly uh, determined in Rwanda, resulting in people being wrongly returned to their country of origin or facing persecution. He pointed to evidence from the United Nations Refugee Agency, the UNHCR, which highlights the failure of similar deportation agreements between Israel and Rwanda. There was there, the ruling concludes substantial grounds for believing that the removal of the claimants to Rwanda would expose them to a real risk, a real risk of ill treatment. While some Tory MPs rallied against the decision, Lee Anderson, the Conservative Party Vice Chair, said Sunak should just ignore the law and send them straight back. 
Yeah, Prime that's Minister the, said that's the uh, that's the, the poster there. Oh yeah, let me just read that for you guys. So if you can't read it there, he, uh, <clears throat> thirty P Lee says, "I think the British people have been very patient, and now they're demanding action. It's time for the government to show real leadership. I think we should ignore the laws and send them straight back to the straight back the same day." Says uh, uh, Mister Mister Lawbreaker Lee, thirty P Anderson guys. Thirty P Lee. Um, I just want to put one or two caveats about just before you just to for, to remind people this. If you haven't seen um, Phil from Different Biases video on this, because I think it's really important, there are some key points that he put in this. So, first of all, the as I said, as I said, as I was uh, as I was reading it out, the European Convention on Human Rights has absolutely nothing to do with this court ruling whatsoever, and they've even stated that in, when they read it out in the court. Um, so that's the first. Uh, the first caveat. Um, the second caveat is um, is that with regards to this actual policy, is that if if it all goes through and if he actually does send them there, the idea is is they don't come back. They get sent there. They do not come back. There's no um, policy or asylum application for them to come to the UK once they are deported to Rwanda. No, they do. There's no system for them to come back. The idea is is that once they're gone, they're gone. That's it. But they're not supposed to know that, so just wanted to put those two caveats out there, Lee. Yeah, on the on the on the laws that they, this will break, it's <coughs> they, they said that it was it was basically the obviously there's, there's certain laws that the European the European Court of Rights and the, you know the UN's um, Convention on Human Rights or whatever it is. I'm not sure. They, yeah, they, the United Nations yeah. more than so. The, but yeah. it, but it's it's about how that's interpreted in British law, and there, so there are laws that are based on those laws in, that are enacted in British law that that basically bring those ideas into British law. So they would have to scrub a load of British laws, or overwrite them, in order to achieve this. Uh, and I think that was something that people have voted to get voted for, and they tried to push it through in the past, but it failed. Um, but the other the other thing was the um, uh, oh god damn I forgot what you were saying. What was the second bit you said about the uh, oh that they they wouldn't be coming back. So yeah, well and and the, this is the risk is that they're going to get pushed. The the with the Israel one they were sending people well they were sending people back to the country that they they arrived they'd come from originally if they if they didn't they, because once you take them into Rwanda they then become part of the Rwandan refugee system which then. They have to apply through the Randu refugee asylum system, and if and under their rules, they can actually just send them back to whatever whatever country they came from. So basically, putting them straight back at risk. One of the things that Rishi Sunak said that he would do in this new these new laws that he's planning would be to make sure that he put he put into the into the treaty that they would have they couldn't be sent back. They would have to be sent back to Britain first uh, if they were rejected by uh, rather than being sent back to the country. So that is one thing that he, he could change. Um, I mean, but but um, it's interesting the, the examples that they they gave uh, for for uh, uh, and that was based on the inf- uh, evidence from the United UNHCR that the court gave mm. as reasons why Rwanda wasn't a safe country, and it and one of the ones that really stood out for me was Rwandans living in the UK that the Met Police have had to go to and say we have uh, we have uh, intelligence that the Rwandan government is planning to kill you. To assassinate you in the UK, and also all the different torture and and, and killings in Rwanda of, of dissidents in Rwanda as well. Um, so you know it isn't a safe country, whatever the whatever the government says, and that no. and that's in that's in. Uh, so that would be a, that would be a reason why, if it, if they did try to push this through, and it and and the were caught, the were they would be reason enough to basically try and if they tried to bring the laws in saying that Rwanda was a safe country. That the that the government that um the court of appeal you know people could bring up um judicial review or whatever you know appeals for it. There's so. lots of league. Yeah, it's not just British laws, but I think international laws will, yeah. will also play a part in this as well. Yeah. So it's going to drag on and on and on before they even get a flight going. Like he's, hope... he's, he's, he's go on, sorry. He's, he's he's vowing that he'll get it get a flight out by spring, which is like yeah, sure. sure. Yeah. Well, right, well ho- just... hopefully, hopefully that that means it'll drag out until after the next election, and, and Labour can just just, just ditch it <laughs> straight away and say, right, we're not doing any, doing anything with that. Hopefully, yeah. So far, guys, we've wasted 140, I think 140, 160 million pounds so far. Taxpayers' money has been wasted on this whole pointless scheme, just guys, just for the record. Yeah, so, and there you go. Uh, yeah, just a little reminder that the government has spent more money on the failed Rwanda scheme than it did on domestic abuse. Uh, 
fig refugees for women and children. That was what Jess Phillips tweeted after the court ruling, guys. Mm. Um, that's just, uh, yeah, that's pretty sickening to say the least, guys. Um, I'm just going to see if there's anything else. Just going to have a quick scroll. While you have a look at the chat, I'm just going to see if yeah, there's sure. anything else. Um, <laughs> so now, okay. Um, right, okay, I'll go through. Uh, the talk around the delocal delocalization reminds me of another delocalization in the past. Um, Zhao says Rwanda is a very safe place. I wonder why so many gay people have run away from there. And <coughs> uh, number three, next to an emergency law, cancel the general election. Um, and we still got Stog says, "I hi Doug. Um, I I Zhao, sorry, I didn't know. You, I forgot you you weren't there before. Uh, so Zhao and we've got Stog uh, says in other news, King Canoe is to introduce emergency legislation to turn the tide back. Yes." £169,000 to send an asylum seeker to Rwanda, says Cathal. Um, yeah. Hi, David. David's here. David Gerardo. Hi, hi David. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, the talk of the Rwanda delocalisation reminds me of another delocalisation yeah, in the yeah. past. Yeah. Duke says, Son, I, I can't have my own way, so I'm going to change the rules of the game. We're playing to the detriment of everyone else. It's pathetic. Yeah, yep, this is pathetic. Like, I mean, um, j after that ruling, James Cleverly had um, had the studies, like a motion and that in the parliament, and he was just like trying to play it off like, like that it's not over that uh that they were expecting this and they had a, they still got plans to do it and i was like good god almighty they're still playing it off like it's all fine and i'm just like please just move on from this they've invested so but much no. money and time in it and they've got the base on the side they can't they can't drop it you know it's all they've got left i think you know that, that's literally all they've got left the well, he policy. reduced inflation, apparently. That's the one thing he's got. Well, he re even... infl inflation just reduced naturally, just as a, as a quick, uh, you know. No, no, he, done it, he, done it, did, it. he did it all. He did, he it, did all. it all, yes. He's brought it down to yeah. half, so he can he can tick off one of his things on his on his. He tick off box. one of his five. As Keir Starmer said in, in the Cohen's, we'll come back to that in a bit, but as Keir Starmer said, he, the, he said he promised to stop the boats, all boats, by end of the year and it's now november 16th 15th and uh it's down by a quarter is it a quarter third yeah something the, like that which could but be to like be a fair, the, down to, to be weather fair, the weather yeah. he's gonna say i've stopped the boats because uh we stopped the boats guys um yeah that's because there's a massive storm out there it's, it's um, king canute it's like like uh like uh doug says king canute he's stopped the way he's brought the weather in he's summoned the weather and turned back yeah. the boats that's what he's done you see God, God helped him stop the weather. Uh, yeah, oh bloody hellfire, says Duke. Yes. <laughs> at this at this at this rate, I'm going to need tranquilizer, says Duke. Yeah. Um. Right. Okay. Should we move on to the next one now? We'll just yeah, because this is pretty much related. the same same yeah. topic. But uh, from a certain person's point of view, guys, everyone's favourite woman. <laughs> <laughs> No, not Pretty Patel, guys. Uh, Breverman demands Sunak's legislate. Do you remember Pretty Patel? Do you remember Pretty Patel? Wasn't she wonderful? Uh, uh, yeah, she was. You know, she was. She looks a bit like a penguin, <laughs> but no, what like a penguin? Um, but, yeah. anyway. The sacked Home Secretary joins a backlash from Tory rights over judgment as at least six MPs are preparing to submit letters of no confidence. <sighs> dun, dun, dun. Um, only as as a, as far as I'm aware, only one Conservative MP has publicly announced that they've handed in their letter of no confidence, and that is Andrea Jenkins. Hence, play the song all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> don't let me sing it. Swell of, uh, no, no, you don't need to sing it. But, and that was the song I felt uh, that came to mind every time I saw, saw her. So just like anyone else, anyone else, no one, no, no just, just me, you, just, just little old me. <laughs> Ah, so, wine so well, me. Here we go. So well, Cruella Braverman has joined a backlash. Uh, uh, has joined the backlash from white wing conservative MPs who are pushing for emergency legislation to overrule the Supreme Court's decision on the UK government's uh, Rwanda deportation plan. A day after accusing Rishi Sunak of betrayal and her sacking as Home Secretary, she called on the Prime Minister to legislate or admit defeat. In a fresh intervention shortly before she, he promised legislation to stop the plan before being blocked. Breverman said a bill must block off UK international and domestic legal commitments, including European Conventions on Human Rights and the Human Rights Act that have frustrated the Rwanda deportation plan. 
This will give Parliament a clear choice, control illegal migration uh, or explain to the British people why they should never ever accept greater numbers of illegal rivals settled here, she said on a social media platform X, also known as Twitter. For those like me who believe that effective immigration control is vital, must understand they cannot have their cake and eat it. There is no chance of curbing illegal migration when it comes with the current legal framework. We must legislate or admit defeat. Her latest broadside come as at least six MPs were posed to submit letters of no confidence in Rishi Sunak. According to Andrea Jenkins, a rebel backbencher who, who has already submitted her own. That there was a cautious early reaction to Sunak's pledge from at least one group of Conservative MPs on the right, but they warned that his promised legislation must come to Parliament within weeks to ensure that the flights to Rwanda are in the air within months. The new Conservatives a group of predominantly Red Wall MPs co-chaired by Miriam Cates and Danny Kruger, saying that they would need more than the declaration that Rwanda was a safe country, adding, we must move now to ensure that at that is time, finally, there is simply no opportunity for right-based claims against deportation. The bill must disapply the Human, Human Rights Act and give effectiveness to the policy, notwithstanding the ECHR and Refugee Convention. It must reinstate the power of government to disregard interim rulings from Strasbourg, they added on a post on X. We have no time left. This bill must come to Parliament within weeks. They must have everything in it to ensure that the flights are in the air within months. Because <sighs> that's the most important thing in the country at the moment. Not the failing NHS, not the infrastructure, not like trains not running no, not, strikes. Not, 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 no, if you're, you're not, never mind your cost of living crisis. Never mind uh, councils going bankrupt. We never mind uh, broken hospitals. Never mind... Um, uh, ne never mind your 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 food. Uh, food is costing more. Never mind uh, nurse getting a doctor's appointment. No, nope. guys, we've got to get these flights up in the air. It's do or die, guys. It is literally do or die for this Conservative government. I mean, good God Almighty! Yeah. I mean, it's but just pe people, so pathetic. People think this this is like you know. <laughs> people agree. They go, oh, she's just talking sense, Braverman. You're like, what? I don't know. Just some. <sighs> They are really infuriating. There's still people in her constituency who agree with her. Yeah, yeah. Politics oh, yeah, Joe people. was there. Yeah, yeah. The politics Joe were chatting, talking to people there, and there, were, and there was one or two people who were in agreement. I was just like, have you been paying any attention whatsoever to what's been going on? No, you've been reading the probably the Telegraph or the Daily yeah. Fail, you know, or getting your info from GB News and not even seeing what's actually going on. Yeah, well, this, this is it. There's, there's probably like no, no refugees anywhere near Fairham. Um, she's mm. probably the only brown person in living in Fairham, I would imagine, g given her twenty six thousand majority <laughs> she's got. Uh, yeah, I don't know. She's just she's a horrible person. I, 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 but the people, yeah, she plays her. She's all oh, this is showboating at the end of the day. They don't really care yeah. if these people go out to get sent to Rwanda. They can give a toss. I mean, the the number of people we're talking about is is tiny in comparison to. What is it? I think uh, I was listening to James O'Brien this morning. He said there's like 450 applicants. The pro Rwanda is last is in the last year. It's only processed 450 re uh, asylum requests. And I think all of them mm. have been sent have been rejected. Um, from what we were saying, the UNHCR was saying. So you basically got no chance of getting of getting asylum in in Rwanda. Um, and we've got a backlog of what? What's the backlog now? Is it 170 odd thousand? I, don't know, I, can't, I can't remember how many it is. It's something ridiculous. It's uh, very high. Yeah. We're not talking in hundreds. We're talking in like tens of thousands. And um, yeah, so so it's just a nonsense. All it is, is like I say, it's showboating, playing to the base, to the racist base. Um, just to, just yeah, to make I mean, it we're, look like we're paying tougher. out for not just for that, but also paying out for accommodations, yeah, for them in Rwanda yeah. as well. Like, yeah. uh, there was a there was a, uh, a video I've done on Patreon. If you guys have on uh, on Patreon, I had a video of basically a layout of one of the places where the so called asylum seekers would be deported to. The rooms look pretty, the, the, the bedroom looked actually pretty decent, didn't look like a prison. The toilet yeah. was a bit questionable but it was like still like are they actually going to end up being going here no and we're paying taxpayer money for this for absolutely nothing uh just and, giving away money guys that's yeah, what it and, is and on top of that we've uh they we have to bring asylum seekers or refugees from from rwanda the most vulnerable yeah. ones oh yeah um, but they won't tell you that they, they can't gb news no. won't is tell it, you oh, that is it, is it clause 16 or something i think it's called um I think I heard uh, what it was talking about last week. Um, uh, oh, God, what's his name? Ollie. 
from um damn it, I can't remember his name. The guy from York. Someone's Bowler so, Hatman. Someone's... Ollie Bowler Hatman. Oh, okay. Ollie Bowler Hatman was saying like I think it's close to sixteen, ah. so he loves bringing that out when people start. I'm sure it was Bowler Hatman who said that. Um Zhao says playing the violin while the Titanic sinks, that is what the Tories are doing, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um uh, yes, Jal. Birmingham is broke, here. yeah, in terms of the council, yeah, bankrupt yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, I covered a video on that if you haven't already seen it, guys. Verti's here. <laughs> Alex Dare Kier's here. Hi, Alex Dare. Hi, Verti. Um, yeah. Good to see you guys. Yeah. But um, I don't know if there's anything more to add. David, we... is, here. David is here. Ding dong, Suella has gone. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Ding dong, the wicked witch uh... is he's dead. Well, not dead quite, yeah. but you know, she's gone. Um, right, should we yeah. on to the next one then? Which is kind of related to it. It follows on. Yeah, so uh, um, so obviously uh, we covered it on my live stream, but obviously, um, well, we, we've covered Suella Breverman's sacking, but we haven't really looked at the letter, really, and she pretty much kind of threw the... Um... There's a resignation, uh, not a resignation <laughs> letter, a letter of, uh, was it a resignation? Did she resign or was she sacked? Was she, did she uh, No, she was she, sacked. She was, was sacked, but she's putting it, making it out that she resigned. Right. Um, which is not, not what happened, basically. Right. But she's basically trying to play herself as the, the victim the here victim. of sorts. <sighs> um, oh, the way. Now, I'm not going to read the full letter for you guys, but... Um, Please, I, I haven't uh, read it. I haven't heard it. Oh, you want me to read the whole thing? <laughs> yeah, go on. Oh God, Jesus I mean, Christ! Not, 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 not that bit though. <laughs> uh, right. Let me get to the. Uh, oh God, that was scary. Right, I'm gonna get to the. I'm gonna read from as you know. Scroll down to as you know. As and you I'll know. Read from that. Okay. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, right. Yeah. Because because I'm not. We don't want to read the bit about saying thank, thank you. Blah blah blah. What to thank all of them? Blah blah. I'm yeah. proud what I achieved. Yeah. Blah blah blah. Proud right. of you. So as you know, I accepted your offer. Right, guys. So here we go. So as you know, I accepted your offer to serve as a Home Secretary in October 2022 on certain conditions, despite you having been rejected by a majority of party members during the summer leadership contest and thus having no personal mandate to be Prime Minister. I agreed to support you because of the firm assurances you gave me on key policy priorities. The, These wait, were among they, other... so, I'm say, so, so basically, she's saying, oh, she's having a dig saying you have no personal mandate to be Prime Minister. Well, neither did Liz Truss or... Um... Boris Johnson when he was when he first became prime minister. Okay, so these were among Sorry, other things. N- number one was reduce overall legal migration set out in the 2019 manifesto through alternalia reforming international students r- student routes and increasing salary thresholds on work visas. Number two, include specific notwithstanding clauses into new legislation to stop the boats, i.e. exclude the operations of the European Convention on Human Rights, Human Rights Act, and other international laws that thus far obstructed progress on this issue. Number three, deliver the Northern Ireland Protocol and retain EU law bills in their in their then existing form and timetable. That one is definitely 100% made up. She does not give a damn about the Northern Ireland Protocol. I'm just going to put that out there. Oh, yeah. She's, no just, she's just finding that, ways. That one's just... Hundred, she's just looking for a reason to, to, to dig there. Number four, equivalent uh, issue unequivocal statutory guidance that's to schools that protect biological sex, safeguard single-sex spaces, and empower parents to know what is being taught to their children. It was an op- a document with clear terms that you agreed in October 2022 during your second leadership campaign. I trusted you. It is generally agreed that is my support was a pivotal factor in you winning the leadership contest and thus enabling you to become prime minister. It's because of me! Yeah, all my support. Say. I did everything. I made Rishi For- Sunak. I made Rishi <laughs> prime minister. For a year, as the Home Secretary, I said, no worse letters to you on the key subjects contained in our agreement. May request to discuss them with you and your team and put forward proposals on how we might deliver these goals. I worked up the legal advice, policy details and actions to take on these issues. This was often met with equivalent disregard or lack of interest. You have manifestly and repeatedly failed to deliver on every single one of these key policies. Either you distance your style of government means you are incapable of doing so, or I must surely conclude now that you never had any intention of keeping your promises. You lie to me. A, poli- a, politi- not- <laughs> a Tory politician lying? What? Disgraceful. These are not just pet interests of mine. <laughs> 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 My precious. 
These are what we promised to the British people in our 2019 manifesto, which led to a landslide victory. They are what the people voted for in the 2016 Brexit referendum. I don't remember putting that in the box. I don't remember that in the box, Lee. Was that in the the tick box? What, Rwanda? Sending people to Rwanda? No, I didn't know that. that Oh, that's that's new new to me. Our deal was no more promised than promised over dinner. Oh, they had dinner and they promised over dinner, did they? There's no mere promise over dinner, no. She's saying she wasn't just like this sat over dinner and went, oh, yeah, I'll do it. Uh, to be discarded when convenient and denied when challenged. I was clear from day one that you did not wish to leave the ECHR. The way to securely and swiftly deliver a Rwanda partnership that would be blocked off by the ECHR, the HR and other obligations that would inhibit our ability to remove those with no rights to be in the UK. Our deal expressly referended, notwithstanding clauses to that effect. Your rejection of this path was merely a betrayal of our agreement, but a betrayal of your promise to the nation that you would do whatever it takes to stop the votes. At every legalisation I cause, I cautioned you and your team against assuming we would win. I would repeatedly urge you to take legislation measures that would better secure us against the possibility of defeat. You ignored these arguments. You opted instead of wishful thinking as a com- comfort blanket to avoid having to make hard choices. Your irresponsibility has wasted time and left this country in, in a, an impossible position in action, man. I've just added that bit. <laughs> <laughs> if we lose in the Supreme... Well, blah, 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 blah. We, have, we lost in the Supreme Court. Uh, your worse what? than this, your magical thinking. Magical thinking. Wow. Yeah, it was his magical <laughs> thinking. Believing that you he's, can he's will your way through out. this without upsetting police polite opinions, which has meant you have failed to prepare any sort of credible plan B. I wrote to you on multiple occasions setting out what credible plan B would entail and making clear that unless you... Flying monkeys. Proposal, Sorry. In the, in the event of defeat, there is no hope of flights that decide the election. I've received no pli- reply from you. I can only summarise this because you have no appetite for doing what is necessary and therefore no real intention of fulfilling your pledge to the British people. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm not going to read that bit because we didn't win the Supreme Court. Uh, people will not be moved as I originally proposed. Your veg claim was your inheritance. Or, um, Insistence in Rule 939 new cases are binding international law against the views of leading lawyers and silent and council laws will leave us vulnerable to being thwarted yet again by strikes from the court. Um, so basic, basically, she's basically crying because her dream is all but over, guys. Um, essentially, what it is. Oh, and then, is that... then well, sorry, the, another cause of disappointment in context from my recent article in Times has been your failure to rise to the challenge posed by the increasingly vicious anti Semitism and extremism. Displayed on our streets since Hamas's ter- terrorist attacks on seventh of October. Oh, sorry, I thought she was talking about the protests at the weekend, but it wasn't. No. Oh well, I want the protest that she alleged. She's become incited. horse. She's become horse. I have become horse. Nay, so Ella Nay. Urging you to <laughs> <laughs> consider Couldn't the ban. That. The ban, the hate marches, then helps stem the side, the rising tide of racism, intimidation, and ter- terrorist glorification, threatening community cohesion. Except they were peaceful, happy protesters, and, and you incited the far right of such of the English Defence League and one such Tommy Robinson, who fled the scene in a pride camp. <laughs> Oh. Britain is at a turning point in our history and faces the threat of radicalization and extremism in a way not seen for 20 years. Oh, sorry. I regret to say that your response has been uncertain. God, this long, isn't it? I didn't realize it was this long. <laughs> weak and lacking in the qualities of leadership that your country needs, rather than fully acknowledging that severity of this threat. Your team disagreed with me for weeks, and that law needs changing. By the way, I'm just going to put this caveat in here in case I didn't already tell people before. When Sorella Braverman was sacked, there was a massive party at the Home Office with all the civil servants. Was there? Just going to put. <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna put that in there. <laughs> oh, was it? Was they it like a? That, go on. Yeah, uh, was it? Politic UK tweeted that out saying Did there it? was a massive party. <laughs> so I'm just gonna say that out there, guys. Um, blah, 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 blah. um yeah. I don't think we need to add any more, but yeah, basically it's like me, 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 I don't know about um, you, but she sounds very mad in this letter. Oh, well, yeah, I think it, this just sums her up, really. Uh, I may not have always found the right words, but I've always driven you, to give you ever got that, a quiet there's, majority. There's, there's that gift, you know, of a, of, a, of a child who's, like, laying front belly on the floor, kicking and screaming their legs and their, and their arms, back and forth, 
And this is just what I'm thinking of Suella Braverman when she was writing out this letter, guys. Yeah. I don't know about you, but that's kind of how it feels like to me. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, she just, uh, uh, I Mad. made you. I made you, and you, you treat him like crap. You promised me this, you promised me that, and you've done none of it. Uh, yeah, like, I'll, I will get you, my pretty, you and your little boots, says Joe. Says Joe. She, just, little she boots. just wanted... She just wanted that toy. It's like a she was like a little girl that just wanted that toy plane that says Rwanda on it. Rwanda. And she just never. And she's just not going to get it for Christmas, guys. It's no. so heartbreaking. Just think, you know. You know, some kids are just. Everybody yeah, put, but you everybody know, just 10 pounds. but but you got to agree with what Piers Morgan tweeted. You know, being uh, being oh. unemployed, uh, being unemployed is a lifestyle choice. A lifestyle whatever. choice, yes, that is it. So yeah, it's a lifestyle choice. Yeah, I can't yeah. believe I had to agree with Piers Morgan. I know, God the, help us all. Well, mind you, uh, during during lockdown, he was the one who was actually calling him to account, wasn't he, for a lot of that? Mm, uh, he was. He, he's been very. He was very vocal on Suella Braverman uh, yeah. in the run up to this and after. So, tiny, yeah. tiny, 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 tiny credit. Yeah, uh, but we'll give him no more than that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Suzanne, so you didn't sack me. I quit. Here's a letter after the fact to prove it. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, yes. Well said. Well said. <laughs> Dodgiano Dr- 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 says maybe maybe people who vote for Brexit because most Brexiteers were drunk. I still try to find a reason. Um, mm. Yeah, you are the weakest. Sir Ellen Braverman, you are the weakest. Then goodbye, says Cathology. Yes. Um, and because he's his horse, Duke says, "Have a drink, then." Um, small, small, tiny violins by Alistair. Um, yeah, I stopped the news today. Let, been let, thrashing oh, poor Suella, Let me play you a small violin. <laughs> hi, hi, Vincent. Vincent, say Vincent Brennan. Been thrashing my new fire bird guitar. What a release! Okay. Um, <laughs> yes. Right. Okay. Shall we um, move on to the next one? <clears throat> Uh, did you not? Are we playing all the funny stuff later? Are we? Oh, are we, well, we still got the. Uh... Or did we want to do the last story and yeah, then we'll do the funny stuff? Yeah. yeah? Okay, then. Okay. Right. So uh... he's back, guys. The pork man. So uh, we need to introduce those pork markets, Liz Trust. Can you bring them back? <laughs> So uh, uh, this one, guys, is for, uh, I've been covering David Cameron to death and I've got another article dropping tomorrow on David Cameron. Don't ask Not me literally why. to it's death, like, obviously. Yeah. Oh, it's about two, or two, maybe three already. Like, I'm going to have another one tomorrow. I mean, it's not like he's not been the talk of the, top, talk of the town. Um, just before I talk about this article, um, what are your thoughts, actually, Lee, on the return of David Cameron as Foreign Secretary? Why? I mean... It's obviously he's, he's basically scraping a barrel. He needs somebody with a bit of credibility after Pretty Patel and Rish and uh, Suella Braverman in that, in as as foreign secretary. I mean, he brought James Cleverly, who's not exactly the brightest uh, <coughs> knife in the knife in the box, is he? But uh, in the draw, but um, as Home Secretary, so he needed some credibility. But I mean, Lord Lord Cameron, yeah. So he's had to make him a lord in order to do it. Um, he's got. Zero um, credibility in Europe because of Brexit, because he's blamed for it, um, because he offered, he promised a referendum on the basis of, of um, solving all the problems with the, you know, saving his party from the from UKIP. I mean, UKIP aren't even barely even registering on the on the polls of these days. Um, but um, he's just, uh, I, don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't know. He's, he's got he's got the cheek to show his face, to be honest. But you know, he probably apparently apparently he's been he's been um, last couple of years decided to get back into into frontline politics, and he's been itching to get back in, and he, he's wanted that role. So um... there was um, a couple of couple of stories. So there was um, apparently Rishi Sunak originally wanted William Hague, and William Hague said no. William no. Hague has denied that. Um, William Hague was the one who arranged the meeting between uh, David Cameron and Rishi Sunak, and it wasn't. It was on Thursday that was agreed. One of the other rumours is that this is all to do with the trade, securing a trade deal with India. 
which would mean that and somewhere in long somewhere in that deal Rishi Shunak will get a big bump of pay somehow uh to, probably to with his, one of his, his business probably with yeah. a company one of his businesses or businesses that he's wife may have ties to mm-hmm. uh, and and somehow david cameron is gonna uh make some money off this too as uh somehow as well um so there is some dirty links that have definitely allegedly uh involved in all of this guys so oh, they only um, do anything to, <laughs> to enrich themselves really don't they so yeah and speaking of dirty things here guys so so Keir starmer has challenged Rishi sunak over his appointment of david cameron as foreign secretary raising concerns about his links to china the Labour leader asked if there would be a full public disclosure for his work for ch- for Chinese interests. The Keir cited Lord Cameron's previous work for the Chinese Investment Fund, which he says has been engineered by the Chinese state. Prime Minister said Lord Cameron had unrivaled experience. It's such a shame they can't hold him to account in the Houses of Parliament, isn't it? Uh, in in, in Lee, the Lords, you know? yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Defending the appointment, Mr. Sunak said he would help the UK navigate an uncertain world. It's just such a shame. He's got a whole back bench behind him and, and just didn't want to pick any of them. You know, mind you, da- have David... you seen that back bench though? Yeah. Uh, well, David Cameron, uh, I loved uh, David Lammy when he was asked, when he when he first stepped up and he was like, like he's got, like, I'd like to welcome the foreign secretary, except he's not here, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Which, by the way, the speaker was not happy about either. He also had made a speech on it as well. Um, did he? Just went, yeah, yeah. He had a, a he did um, a little sp- a speech in the houses of uh, out in, in public, basically saying that he was not happy with the appointment. Essentially, saying because obviously, given given current events, we have a foreign secretary that can't be held to account by the houses of the parliament. Um, so, so, so that's the point he was making. He added, like every other government minister, he will go through the normal process with the independent advisor. The former prime minister made a surprise return to the cabinet as part of Mr. Sunak's dramatic reshuffle on Monday. <coughs> excuse me, when he sacked the Weller government as Home Secretary. <coughs> During prime minister's questions, Sakir said the prime minister obviously thinks so little of his own MPs that he had to peel David Cameron away from his seven-year exile in a shepherd's hut and make him foreign secretary. Raising concerns about Lord Cameron's interest in China, the Labour leader highlighted his former role as vice chairman of the UK China Investment Fund. Um, did you? Uh, I wanted to ask you, Lee, as well, before we talk a bit about, about this as well. What did you make of uh, James Cleverly as now the Home Secretary? Uh, there's been a shuffle. Obviously, Steve Barclay is no longer Health Secretary as well. He's been gone. And uh, Theresa Coffey axed as... Um, environment secretary and she said and this is absolutely 100 yeah, true she said this on bbc radio 4 i believe he said she said um that she had to go to hospital and she nearly died because of the stress of being an environmental minister what are your thoughts on the her comments on I, that? I haven't seen that i didn't see that i knew that she'd gone she with the stress of it right i don't think she was suitable for that i don't think she's suitable for frontline politics i'll be honest with you um, yeah, James I, cleverly I, similarly. Um, go on. What are you gonna say? I was just gonna say, like, I mean, a part of me, like, like a part of me is like, okay, f- from the human side of things, it's like, okay, you, you you're claiming that you nearly died and it was very stressful. But my other point is, but my other side of this is, is like, if that is how you generally felt, why didn't you quit the role? Why didn't you step down? Why didn't you move out of it if mm. you couldn't handle it? is the my key point um <clears throat> i mean there was a lot of people mocking her uh, uh, over like the way she was handled her role um and it, and she, i don't know maybe she she was going through some mental health stuff maybe allegedly i don't know because i do take that kind of stuff very seriously um so I, i'm but a part of me feels like if, if you generally were feeling these things if you were generally getting stressed out like why, if it's true, why, why, why did you stay in the role if that's how you felt? Like that's the thing that kind of infuriated me more than anything. Um, when you were doing a, it, with all due respect, a, a piss poor job of a, yeah. as an environment secretary. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, yeah, she's like she can she can like now she can look at you know growing turnips and you know just keeping them sheltered from. The wind blowing in the wrong direction. Well, let us know if you find more, Lee, because we, we 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 need a part two for that. <laughs> it turns, uh, they just kind of ruined that now because she's she's not in frontline politics. It's like, oh, you know, think back to when when Teresa Coffey told us she'll be eating turnips. Mm. 
Yeah, the video is still there on the I'm... channel, guys, if you want to check it out. Better, um... what's it, golden days? I don't know. Better days, oh. better times. Um... Yeah. Oh, um, and uh, what do you think of the uh, new um, Minister for Common Sense as well? Uh... <laughs> Sorry, I probably just laughed right down the microphone. <laughs> No, I'm not joking. There's a new minister for common sense. Hello. What's her name, guys, in the chat? Remind me of her name. Oh, Esther um, McVeigh. She's got that's amazing it. hair. But that's that's about where the limit of her uh, of her expertise is. That's I think. Um, but you, you know why she's the minister for common sense, right? Because she delivers common sense only on GB News. Is she, oh, she's on GB News, isn't she? Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> Anti woke. She's she's supposed to be. Uh, who was it? So somebody, somebody said in 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 uh, on some other. I think it was on the uh, on Labour Social before the uh, mm. they want to start getting um um call. Uh, is it call uh, call uh, Esther? Whenever there's anybody says anything woke, it's like get Esther on the phone. <laughs> get her Esther on the case. <laughs> Oh, uh, the, the best thing about it was uh, people were saying, so the rest of the Conservatives have no common sense then, question mark. <laughs> she's, she's the only one. Oh, uh, dear. No, like, guys, it's absolutely the most central true. One of us. Oh, her, her, job, her job as a minister is to tackle woke, guys. That's not a joke, by the way. That's absolutely 100% true. Fucking hell. Like, it's absolutely true. <laughs> it's absolutely true. It's not a joke, guys. She's actually her job as a minister is to tackle wokeness. It's, it's, I, it's, think, I know. Was it? Uh, what's his name? Was say uh, James O'Brien was saying that, that she's she's probably not going to get anywhere near the cabinet. It's just to kind of keep her sweet, give her a position. But she'll well, be she's the closest near. thing in the Conservative Party that that's in the cabinet that's right wing of some sort. So that's why she has a position of some sort. Um, <sighs> To try and appease some of the right wingers, which is why she got the role. Um, so to say, hey, look, I've got you guys still a right wing person in the cabinet. It's just not Suella Braverman. That's basically what he's saying. So, um, but yeah, Do, common you, sense minister, guys. Yeah, Jeannie Bottle says Liz Trust warned us about port markets. The only thing she warned us about is she told us how great they were. Was it code for DC coming back after making a mess and running away? I don't know. He's an anti woke. Could have been Morse code of some sorts, possibly. We do, we just don't know. Yeah, Ministry uh, of Silly Walks is yo. Uh, didn't yeah, didn't David? <laughs> sorry, go on, please. No, go on, go on, go on. What are you going to say? says, didn't didn't Cameron leave the kids in a pub or something? Yeah, he left one of his kids in a pub. <laughs> we'll never forget that story. Oh, missing oh something. It's like, it was like, uh, was it like, it was like, get in, like on a plane, and he realised home alone in a pub. <laughs> David, did you leave the kids at the pub again? We've, Dave, we've only got three kids. Where's the fourth one? I don't know. Oh, I, I don't know, but Boris has got 100, so it's all right. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly, um, yeah. Right, before we get, jump into all the funny stuff, um, just like, I, I mean, obviously, this, this story, guys, obviously, we're completely off topic from the, the China story there, but I think, um, you know, it's essentially saying that um, David Cameron allegedly has ties to more corruption um so we, we i'm expecting more taxpayer money to somehow end up in his pocket or in his friend's pocket somehow while he's foreign secretary allegedly is what i'm saying so we shall see mm-hmm. um right shall we uh on the on the we've got a report on on the uh, rishi sunak's um reshuffle should we have a look at this oh yeah we better know guys very important guys pay attention here very important as Rishi Sunak shakes up his team, I'm joined by the Right Honourable Jeffrey Jeff Jeffrey. Do you enjoy a reshuffle? Absolutely, it gets the blood pumping, the adrenaline going. I mean, without regular reshuffles, you end up with ministers who know what they're talking about, which <laughs> simply is not how we do things in this country. So, Suella Bravman is gone. Just last week, you said you would back her all the way. Do you stand by that? What I meant was that I would back her all the way out of the door. So you're glad she's gone. <laughs> Suella is a skilled politician who simply needs to learn the difference between a dog whistle 
and incitement. You think she said <laughs> the quiet part out loud? More like screamed it through a megaphone, then scrawled it in the Times. Uh, but like all good villains, she'll be back. Did you say villains? No, women. Right. We're hearing some <laughs> speculation that David Cameron could return to cabinet. <laughs> oh, very funny. I mean, only last month, Rishi said he was the change candidate and was breaking with the old consensus. He's hardly likely to bring back an old prime minister who's not even an MP. Well, I've just received mm. confirmation that David Cameron has been made foreign secretary and been made a baron. It's an excellent move and shows the Prime Minister's maturity and confidence. Foreign Secretary <laughs> is a tough job right now, although I suppose even if David Cameron resigned tomorrow, he'd still be in the Lords for life. But it wouldn't be like David Cameron to walk away when the going gets tough. <laughs> You've been a minister yourself, of course, many times, sometimes for as long as a month. So can you tell us how a reshuffle works? <laughs> well, you get a WhatsApp from number 10 asking for a quick chat. If they want you to come in the front door, that's good news. The back door, less so. <laughs> At this point, I'm tempted to make a rude joke. Wasn't that one of the reasons you had to resign? Yes, it turns out that Tinder DMs are not off the record. So there will be MPs all across Westminster anxiously waiting for that notification. Absolutely, and you never know when it... Oh my god. Good news. I'll say. My local takeaway is having a sale. Oh, we're just hearing that <laughs> Esther McVeigh is heading into Cabinet. What? What job is she doing? Uh, it's being described as Minister for Common Sense and Against Wokeness. Oh, come on, that's not fair. I suggested that to Rishi last week. As a joke. Did he laugh? <laughs> Does he ever? Thank you. Uh, minister? No. Yes. <laughs> Two for one on selected pizzas. Next up, as the government appoints its 16th <laughs> housing minister in 10 years, we ask, when was the last time you pretended to care about something but kept putting it at the bottom of your to-do list? <laughs> Oh, he's brilliant, Matt Green. Oh, God. Oh, Minister for Common Sense, guys. See, I wasn't lying. See, Matt Green? Matt Green yeah. was telling the truth, guys. Um, guys, make sure you subscribe to Matt Green and watch the video on the Heath channel and give him a like and all that stuff, guys. Very important that you do that. Um, <clears throat> Shall we? Uh, exclamation point saying, no, dog, dog, dog. Davis, don't be so silly. There's no exclamation point saying. There's, no, there's not going to. No, there's not going to be anything like that. I hope you're doing well. But if you're either. you're more than welcome to sing right where you are sitting or standing watching this show, and sing we will all not you like. judge you. Hearts, we will not judge. No one here, neither myself or anyone in the chat, is going to judge you. No, no judgment here. Mm -hmm. um, right. So, uh, should we move on to this? And this is uh, this is what I spotted during the week. Oh, okay. Incredible um, clip of do you want a to read? Yeah, yeah. An incredible clip of a heroic German shepherd protecting a toddler went wild, wildly viral all over again. So I think this has been been uh, gone viral once before, but I'd never seen it again. Uh, there are many stories of brave and heroic dogs that have saved their owners' lives, but such occasions are rarely caught on camera. However, one such clip has resurfaced by a little German shepherd, and it's a remarkable watch. It was shared by wild content on Twitter and quickly racked up almost 10 million views. This dog is so clever. Uh, I'm gonna. Sh I'll show you this. Bro, this oh, just wow. blew my mind. Right here we go. Make sure <coughs> the volume up. The, the thing goes in the water. The girl runs away. Watch the dog on the right. It's like a real life lassie. Okay. Oh, he just brings the toy back to him. How amazing is that? Oh. <laughs> that is so cool. Um, oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> He's the way he just picks up the stick and like the net and fishes it out as well. And just say, you know. Doug's so clever, he knows, like, oh, no, you got to stay away from there. I'll get there. Don't worry, I'll get the thing out of the water. Brilliant. Wow. Oh, wow. That's, um, wow. That's, uh, that's incredible. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. I love that. I, I the, the thing that I love the most is, is how quick he was to react to the, what potential danger and, and, and then 
the that's just amazing yeah but that just shows not just the the obedience but how much you know he he dog cares you know and mm. it's there if they need if they need them amazing 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 uh, I love it. One of the comments is like he's, he's even wearing a t-shirt as well. Yeah, smartest dog alive. Smartest. Yeah, I need I need one of these. Yeah. See, so many Very dogs have this level of intelligence, and most of them choose to be jerks and lick their butts all day long. And oh, no, I let let go speak to my real dog quick and show him this video. <laughs> 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 That's the real service animals. Herm humans don't deserve jobs. Yeah, he, he's no, uh, they do do not deserve them. Uh, I've seen smart ass dogs, but man, this may be the smartest one I've ever seen. This is KPJ. Yeah, I'm just blown away. Um, yeah, it's amazing what you can catch on CCTV, guys. It's just incredible. But uh, yeah, thanks for sharing that, Lee. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Uh, that was the story by Lee. Which, by the way, this Friday I have my first um, good news video. Uh, video I'm doing on Friday on my channel. So a new podcast. Cool. So I hope you guys do it. So hopefully to do once a week, but it depends how much good news I find. But we'll see. It's been a struggle finding good news recently. So <laughs> it has been a struggle finding good news, but I'm going to try and do at least one a week on my channel, and hopefully we'll continue to find at least one a week here for you guys as well, because we need more positivity. That's mm -hmm. for sure. So what um, else we got, Lee, for today? Well, we you know he came back to his triumphant return last week, and he was well received, so he's back again. Mm. Um, with some more of his uh, amazing Guys, it's that time again. Stories. It's that man. The man we want to be our next Prime Minister, because I've PM. seen it in the comments last week. <laughs> it's time for Adrian Charles's interesting article of the week. The left lane on a motorway is the, mo is the for the virtuous and the good. That's why I love it. How many times do the rest of you need to be told the middle lane is only for overtaking? That was Adrian Charles's interesting article of the week. Thank you, Adrian. I actually agree with him. For once, I agree with Adrian Charles. I, yeah, I like his... I like his style on that one. I don't like his yeah, style. Absolutely. Just, uh, How dare they uh, try to overtake on any other uh, lane except the middle lane, guys. Uh, well, these people who sit in the middle lane are doing do my head in. Um, yeah. Although, absolutely. Uh, um, I, think, I think he wants to actually kill people who don't who stay in the middle lane. It might, it might be a bit extreme there, Adrian, but, you know, I didn't want to kind of drag you. Drag Adrian you Charles, down. guys, the voice of the voiceless. Voice of reason. That is, <laughs> yes, the voice of reason. And um, I think that's, that's like Joe Joe says the voice of reason, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the voice of yeah, and I think that's it, um, Lee. I think we've just hit it just just over the time, haven't just we? Just over today? an hour, yeah. Um, yeah. Just over an hour, guys. We've got, um, we got a funny video to lead us out, but yeah, guys, we have the funniest, crackiest, hilarious video uh, for you guys, uh, but on your way out. So please don't go anywhere. Lee saw this earlier. I've already seen it, and he could not stop laughing in his head off. <laughs> And trust me when I tell you guys, you are going to laugh your head off when you see this video. Um, it's probably an old one, but um, I don't know how many people have seen it, but trust me, <laughs> hey, this is going to boggle your mind. You know what, Lee? You should play it twice, actually, because it's that play, funny. Play it twice. Maybe, it's, it's, well, it's like maybe, we, should play it, maybe we should play it twice, yeah, so you guys, yeah. just so you can really let it sink in. Can, can just before, 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 you that, get guys, in, before you get into the thing, I'm just going to say, me and Kendra are going to have a falling out, because she says hogging the middle lane makes motorway driving a little bit more fun. No, I'm I'm with Adrian on this one, Kendra, Kenzie. Back off, Kenzie. All right, anyway, go on. <laughs> Guys, there's going to be a serious debate this Saturday, this Saturday, Saturday night, night on Games, games night. night. Definitely we'll be check having it words, out. Kendra, we're having words. <laughs> <laughs> And guys, I just want to say on that note, guys, I want to say a big thank you to everyone who's come to the Snowflake Show. Don't leave anywhere. We've got one more funny video for you guys. Um, but if you can, before you leave tonight, make sure you hit the like button. It'd be greatly appreciated. If you can, share this video across social media and hit the bell notification icon. Because did you know, you'll be, no you'll be notified of when we go live, which is normally every Wednesday, 9 p.m here on a wednesday night if you haven't already check out my channel at regan elite i've got lots of content and live streams that take place on there too check out my community post to see 
where I schedule on that. Also, if you haven't already joined, you can join us on the Discord community. We have our own Discord community called the Snowflake Server. It's completely free for you guys to join. And I'm just going to do a quick little copy and paste. If my cursor can do it while with one hand, I will try to. And that did not work to plan. Uh, I'll do it in just a moment <laughs> while I'm multitasking here to you guys. But yeah, it's the Snowflake server, guys. It's completely free to join. Um, you can download the app onto your phone so you can access the server, guys. Give it a try. Um, even if you're not familiar with Discord. I wasn't familiar with Discord when the first time I used it. And now I'm basically essentially run our own community so <clears throat> it really isn't that hard to give to give it a try and see how it goes for you guys so we do games nights we hosted music night last uh, sunday as well as well we have a bot that plots that uh plugs lots of youtubers and and, and lots of other good stuff on there too so there's always activity we always have tried to have activities going on on the server for you guys and you are more than welcome to join us on there uh, we do have an after chat we normally do after the show, but Lee Korn will not be able to join us tonight. Uh, I'll hang out in the, in the chat if you guys want to come on after just to say hello. Um, I don't mind hanging out for a little bit, but I, I cannot stay for too long as well because I have a job interview tomorrow, guys, believe it or not. Cross the fingers. A job interview of sorts, uh, allegedly, um, of okay. some sort. It's not a proper job interview, but it may be towards a job interview, but who knows? We'll see, guys. Um, so also just a reminder tomorrow i've got a live stream uh the slow flake corner tomorrow night thursday nine o'clock so if you guys have got nothing else planned and if you want to come hang out with me you're more than welcome to do so as well um and i think lee that's pretty much everything covered we've got christmas coming up so uh won't be too long now a couple more weeks before we have to get the christmas jumpers out for you all. yeah no so, we don't uh, talk about christmas until until december we're not in December yet, so let's not. Um, oh, sorry, guys. Ahead. Yeah, he, Lee is in the uh, attic. Is it? He's probably got a Christmas tree next to him somewhere. He is, yeah, he's he there. is. Yeah, he's down there <laughs> <laughs> with all with all the, with all the decorations as well. <laughs> yeah, and make sure you guys all hail the orb as well, guys. Um, I just want to say again, guys, because we got 119 subscribers, you know, and um, I think we've had over 5,000 views on the channel here so far, roughly around about that number. So I just want to say, guys. Thank you guys so much for all the love and support you guys give us and uh, for plugging the, plug the channel wherever you guys go. We greatly appreciate it. And, um, you yeah, know, onwards and up, upwards, guys, because we're, we're going to keep on going for as, as long as we possibly can. Um, that is for sure. Thank, thanks for all you, all you messages there. Um, good luck with the interview. Uh, Said Zhao, Susanna. Oh, so thanks, good guys. Luck good luck, Regan Lee. Uh, Said Zhao. Uh, best wishes, <laughs> Regan, says Cathal. Um, yeah, good luck, Sabin. Um and um sorry Vincent. Um and um also um what did I see? Oh god it's gone off the screen. Zhao says from the darkness the orb rises, illuminating the ancient kingdom of Albion. <laughs> Well, maybe one day we may, guys, we may have at some point in the future, who knows, we may have an orb and a lava lamp together on a live stream. Keep your eyes out on the Sunday roast. Listen out to Max. You may never know, guys. You may never know. Right. <clears throat> and on that note, on that bombshell, we'll leave you with, uh, this is uh, an interview, somebody somebody from, um, it's not GB News, BJ News in, uh, in London last weekend at the protests reporting on it. So let's have a look at at this we'll leave you this on the way out have a good week guys Feel free to... we may have to play it twice lee <laughs> right okay all right uh, <laughs> leave you this uh take care have a good week and uh, we'll see you next week take care everyone and stay safe i'm here live with bj news at the hate march everyone's brown and it smells let's go interview hamas excuse me how long have you been a human shield five years five years thank you very much <laughs> why do you hate all jews because you're here at a pro-palestine march don't hate all Jews. Liar! She's lying! Zion is a king! Zionism, no way! Is he taking the piss? Look, even the children are mad. Look how angry this Hamas baby is. Ceasefire now! Why should we call for a ceasefire when all of this started on October 7th? Because it didn't start on October 7th. I fucking hate this place. <laughs> he means Israel. He means Israel, 100%. Why are you asking for an armistice on Armistice Day? Uh, because it's important. Yeah, but isn't that disrespectful? Uh, I don't think so. Well, why do you go back to your own country if you don't like it? Oh, I'm English. Right, delete that, delete that. Find a brown person, quick. A witch, <laughs> you're a witch. Oh, Zuela, you're a witch. Unacceptable. Brown people shouting Hamas chants in the streets. Uh, what do you think of <laughs> shit? Rishi. What do you think of Rishi? Shit. Thank you. That's all right. We hate Rishi. We hate Rishi. We hate Rishi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm you all day. Wait.
mate? When are you going to stop this hate march, this rabble? When you agree that they're, they're absolutely tearing down the city? No. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> <laughs> you watch it again. You what do you think, guys? Again. Should we play it again? I think we should play it again, guys, just to let it sink in. Let's play it one more uh, time. Play, just play to it again, just, right? Watch it again. One more time. With BJ News at the hate march, everyone's brown and it smells. Let's go interview Hamas. Excuse me. How long have you been a human shield? Five years. Five years. Thank you very much. Why do you hate all Jews? Because you're here at a pro-Palestine march. I don't hate all Jews. Liar! She's lying! Communism is okay! Zionism, no way! Is he taking the piss? Look, even the children are mad! Look how angry this baby is! Ceasefire now! Why should we call for a ceasefire when all of this started on October 7th? Because it didn't start on October 7th. I fucking hate this place. He means Israel. He means Israel, 100%. Why are you asking for an armistice on Armistice Day? Uh, because it's important. Yeah, but isn't that disrespectful? Uh, I don't think so. Well, why don't you go back to your own country if you don't like it? Oh, I'm English. Right, delete that, delete that. Find a brown person, quick. A witch, you're a witch. Oh, Zuela, you're a witch. Unacceptable. Brown people shouting Hamas chants in the streets. Uh, what do you think of shit? Rishi. What do you think of Rishi? Shit. Thank you. That's all right. We hate Rishi. We hate Rishi. We hate Rishi. <laughs> oh, I've been looking for you all day. Wait, when are you going to stop this hate march, this rabble? When you agree that they're, they're absolutely tearing down the city? I like him. He's one of us. Thank you for keeping us safe. Thank you, bro. Thank you for keeping us safe.